the good old reliable Glock 19. Hickok 45 and this is Glock 19 revisited you know we've done several videos over the years on the Glock 19 various generations and I know you've seen them all we thought we would revisit the Glock 19 today in the fall of 2015 taking care of us too and guess what I have in my holster y'all pretty smart a Glock 19 <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot I really do like this gun. Oh, let's hit that two liter. And I wonder if the gong's awake today. He's awake. I wonder if the red plate's awake. The red plate's awake. Ah, oh, look at this paper target's awake. <laughs> He's always awake. Uh, it's empty after two mags worth. All right, doesn't take long, does it? Yeah, we want to uh, take a look at the Glock 19 again, revisit it, and I'll put this one down on the table with an empty mag in it, and uh, let you look at the, the three generations we have here. We have the uh, second, and we have John's third generation gun, and then the one I was just shooting, the Gen 4, okay? We've done videos, I guess, on all of these and all these generations. Wanted to give you an update on uh, my experience, you know, with the uh, with the Glock 19. It, and it's been for about 15 years. I have owned or fired, owned and fired the Glock 19. All right, I have uh, fired them fairly often, fairly often in videos. You know, we've gone through a lot of different kinds of ammo. We did some serious ammo testing with the uh, Glock Gen 4. 19 gen 4 because there were some issues with the early spring it was a little bit too strong at least for weak ammo it worked fine with uh, full power ammo or carry ammo i think so if you recall we did about three parts i think on that video the uh, gen 4 glock and uh so i have carried the glock 19 a great deal in terms of my experience i still carry it pretty often more so than the 40 i have to tell you i own several of them uh it's just one of my very favorite defensive pistols okay i mean it doesn't compete with a in terms of my feelings for it with a nice you know world war ii 1911 or a cool smith and wesson revolver but as a defensive pistol it is hard to beat uh and so i've had a lot of experience and my impressions you know again my update on the imp my impressions of the gun that's one of the things i want to give you in any of these updates we do when we revisit a firearm what do i think of it now you know do i still like it uh what's my impression of it and i guess i've almost answered that i i like it i guess more than ever yeah i mean there's nothing extra cool about a glock 19 it's been around a good while and uh everybody almost that's been into firearms at all knows the glock 19. i mean there it is it's it's kind of like a model 10 smith and wesson if if in the dictionary you have the word gun or handgun you could put a smith and wesson revolver there as a as a picture couldn't you uh or a uh glock 19. i mean it's just kind of the gun uh, so my impressions of it are as favorable as they always have been and in fact more favorable i think uh with each passing year i think i like it more it makes more and more sense as bullet technology improves the hollow points i carry the and not because federal makes them actually i carry them the hst uh, plus p 147 grain these are some of my carry magazines here that's what i carry and in fact this is some i bought uh federal sent me some and i bought some h uh st plus p that's that's what i carry so and that's just an example though of some of the really good carry ammo you know, it's available police carry it civilians carry it it's uh just the good stuff and it makes the nine millimeter 
a very viable round. I think anybody that studies the ballistics uh, research, you know, the FBI does or anybody else does, it uh, you, you can't really argue. A handgun is a handgun, and uh, but the advances in bullet technology have leveled kind of the playing field among the 45 ACP, the 9 millimeter, and the 40. You know, we all like to argue which is better, which is best. They always have, always will. But uh, the bullet technology uh, has, is, is again, it's it's made that not totally a moot issue, but close to it for all practical purposes. A handgun is just a handgun. It, in a defensive situation, it just it just makes people leak unless it's a central nervous system hit. You know, to to get graphic, you know, about uh, self-defense. Uh, so whether it's a 45 or a 9, as uh, long as you get the the penetration, the expansion. You know, it, it all comes down to, to placement, right? So, you don't have the velocities yet with a rifle. Uh, you have a handgun velocity, you know, and which is way below the average rifle. 5.56, 308, or anything like that. So they're so totally out of that category, uh, they just punch holes. So anyway, even if there is a little baby bit of a compromise, you know, it's, it's overshadowed by, by capacity, ease of shooting, uh, and it sounds like I'm selling the Glock 19, doesn't it? And I guess I am. I, uh, I, I like it a lot. And that's why I have several. That's why I'm, uh, uh, that's why John has one. He's gonna give you his impressions in this video too. So, great gun. Uh, you know my history. Uh, my impressions of it are way, uh, I don't know about way better, but they're, they're better than they even used to be. Okay? We've also got, as you saw there, the, for those who are new, and uh, you know the generations here, but over here you've got the Glock 26, you've got the 19, and you've got the 17. In case you're not as familiar with the different sizes, let me just stack them up here a little bit. Uh, the 19's in the middle. You know the the 26 is a the baby Glock, the small one, and then the 19's in the middle there. It's the it's the midsize Glock. You know, and then the 17 is the big one. Okay. Pretty cool, pretty cool. It just, uh, it's just one of those firearms that fits most people. Uh, it's too big for some applications, yeah, as far as even carry for some people. And it might, you might consider it too small if you like to have a, a full-size gun like a 17, you like a bigger one. But uh, to me, it says right, and I've got a long, large hand, feels good. Of course, they all three feel pretty good. Uh, as far as anything that I maybe haven't told you, I don't know, uh, as we revisit some of these firearms, if I know anything extra, if I've had any experiences, I want to relate them. We're not just going to rehash the, uh, the earlier videos, but uh, I may have told you in one video, I'm not sure, but on uh, John's 21st birthday, I bought him a Glock 21. It's this one right here. And a Glock 19, did I say? His 21st birthday, Glock 19. And uh, this is one uh, we've, we've shown you, has the proof marks on it and everything. So that's pretty cool. I, I figured that a Glock 19, now I knew that he liked the Glock 19, but it's a firearm he'd probably always keep. You always have a place for a Glock 19. You know, it's just that way. <laughs> a mid-size firearm that is fun to shoot and pretty easy to shoot. And I think with, with just a minimal amount of practice, it's not hard to shoot pretty well. It just uh, works out pretty well. I, like I say, so I've increased my inventory. That's something else uh, that I've done since the last Glock 19 videos. I, uh, I have probably one or two more than I had. It's just a marvelous piece of hardware. There's nothing beautiful about it, but it just fits your hand well, okay? Uh, another story I don't know if I've related to you is that when I was got into competition, USPSA, IPSC, and this was before we started, the, I think before the club that I shot in here in Clarksville, close to Fort Campbell, was actually an official I, uh, PSC chapter. Uh, we got that in 89 or 90, but we were having matches. And there was a fellow from, his name was Max. I can't remember his last name. He was a soldier, Fort Campbell. Don't know if he was in the fifth group or what, what group he was in at that time. I wasn't as familiar uh, with some of the groups. Uh, but when we first started competing there, he showed up. Uh, he was, uh, I don't know, Japanese American. I don't know, but he, great guy. He carried a Glock 19, and 
or he had a Glock 19. There were no carry permits at that time, but he he competed with it in the matches we were holding. And I was shooting him 1911, 45, mostly uh, different guns. And I had a Glock 17 or a Glock 17L long slide. I used a little bit, but I remember him pulling that gun out, the Glock 19, and shooting some of the courses of fire pretty well. And I was it uh, tells you how far I've come and in my frame of reference and my way of thinking because you know I like little guns I even like the 26 27 and I was just impressed that this guy shot that Glock 7 19 so well I mean he could knock down the pepper poppers and the steel and he was banging and uh, he was keeping right up with everybody with just a stock Glock 19 that really stuck in my mind it was probably the the roots for my my uh, fondness for small guns it, it probably led to my purchasing a Glock 23 you know the smaller guns it was instrumental I'm sure just remembering how well he shot that smaller gun at that time a Glock 19 was considered a small gun and then when I got a 23 and I started shooting matches with it I remember people having the same reaction they couldn't believe I was shooting a Glock 23 a compact Glock in these matches and doing pretty well with it maybe even winning one occasionally so uh, so it's just a good sized gun that always stuck with me and, uh, and, I've, and I, I appreciate Max because he probably started me on the road to realization that a firearm this size is hard to beat. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a couple of shots, okay? I've got magazines loaded, as you can tell. I have a couple of extras and let's just shoot a couple more, okay? It's hard to be around a Glock 19 too long without firing some shots. These are 124 grain Federal American Eagles, you know. That's a uh, Stealth Gear USA holster inside the waistband that I I like. <laughs> uh, let's see. I wonder if the wind will uh, misdirect my bullets. We're getting a little bit of wind. Not too much. How about some cinder there? Oh, another two liter. Oh, another one. <laughs> Empty mag. Let's put another one in and shoot the gong. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna try the red plate again. That's always a test for me because it's kind of smaller. There we go. I always feel good if I can hit the red plate. Maybe I've been a pig. And as usual, I shoot too fast. How about a turkey? <laughs> oh, man. Mr. Gong, I'm going to wear you out. Yeah, empty. Hey, I can do something about that. <laughs> oh, got a little bit off target there for a second, didn't I? Uh... Glock 19 is just so much fun to shoot. That's the other nice thing about it is, and reason it's so popular, is it's fun to shoot. It's a good range gun, plus it's a great defensive pistol. You know, it's one of those that doubles, uh, I think. And uh, now this one has talon grips on it. So now I did bring, yeah, I've got a couple here. This one, Gen 4, without the talon grips. And uh, they feel pretty good with that, that uh, grip that Glock puts on the Gen 4s, but I still like the Talon grips a little better. Gives it a little bit more traction and maybe a little more size. So I usually put them on as well. And uh, just to remind you of the difference, so that's what you get in the Gen 4. Uh, people talk about the Gen 4 bad mouth it. I actually prefer the Gen 4. I like the feel of it. I like the spring and, and all of that. So there you go. Uh, I don't really know a lot uh, extra of the Gen 4. There's not a lot of astounding history that's come about in the last uh, couple, three years, other than a lot of them have been sold. Uh, I was in a gun shop. I guess it was Nashville Armory, fairly new shop. Uh, and they were telling me, what was the number? This has been six months ago. Hell, I don't want to say because I don't remember. I remember the number, though, just really surprising me about how many Glock 19s they sell. I believe they told me they sell more of those than any other pistol, I think. Don't quote me on that. 
but the number they gave me, how many they sold that, that month or something, or how many they keep in stock at the time, and I don't remember the specific numbers, it just now came to me, in fact, so I wasn't really prepared, but it, uh, it was a big number uh, of them, and it, you don't think about it, because you look at a, a gun rack or a display case, and they've got everything, every Springfield and all the other. They sell a lot of those too, of course, Rugers and run down the line, H and K's. And there's a Glock 19, there's a Glock 17, there's this. So you don't really know uh, the way they, in most gun shops inventory, of course, it's, it's some little gun shops may have, whatever they have is in their, on the shelf, what I'm trying to say. But in a larger gun shop, they just have a sample of everything there. So you don't get this feeling that you know which one sells the most and you know most popular or whatever you don't get a reading on that uh, but I guess you could go into the back room there'd be a big stack of 19s you know and then a smaller stack of some other firearms that don't sell quite as well but are fairly popular too but it's just a, a mainstay I do know in terms of history uh, interesting facts maybe to me is that uh, uh, in addition to being so popular among civilians you know, the New York Police Department, I think, okays three different firearms, and they have a police force of about 40,000. I believe it's considered like the, the if it was ranked as, a, as an, an army, it would be the third largest army in the world or some crazy number like that, you know, the, the New York City Police Department. And I was reading Masada Yub something not long ago about that, and he was saying that by far the majority of them, and they have a choice, they choose the Glock 19 so that's where that comes from most of you know that the New York City police carry the Glock 19 a lot of people including myself I used to think that that's that was the only gun they carried they actually do have a choice but most of them choose the Glock 19 uh, one of the the Marine Special Operations Command recently okayed it you know I noticed uh, for various applications and you know duties and that kind of thing so it's a Glock I know if you're a Glock hater why are you even still watching this video <laughs> But if you like Glocks at all, or if you're interested in them at all, you're thinking about one. Uh, and I tell people this, and I'm not big on telling people what to buy. I, how do I know? It's like asking me what kind of car they should buy, you know? I don't know, you know, I don't know your situation, what would fit you best and what's best for you. But I don't have any problem recommending a Glock 19. If you buy a Glock 19, you're probably going to keep it. And it maybe it turns out to be a little bigger than you thought, and you can't use it the way you want it to, or it's smaller for you, whatever. You will always probably have an application for it. They are just a, a great little gun, so uh, that's my impression of it. Uh, a couple other points I want to make, but before I do that, I want to let John speak, because he might disagree with everything I think about the Glock 19, but uh, he's going to give you his impression of uh, the Glock 19 at, at this point, because he has shot it for several years himself. Okay, John Hickok here. Uh, I'm the uh, younger, hairier version of my dad, and uh, for some reason, he thought maybe it would be a good idea for me to say what I think about this gun. Uh, doesn't seem like a good idea to me, but I'll, I'll try. So, uh, like Dad mentioned, Dad got me this gun uh, when I, on my 21st birthday which was in, I guess, what, 2009, something like that. 2008, 2009, some, somewhere around there, I forget. Um, and this gun was purchased right in the time when either Obama had just been put into office or he had been elected. So people were, it was, one of the, it was nothing, of course, compared to what happened in 2012, but it was a big gun buying extravaganza, I guess I'll call it. And uh, because so many, because Glock 19s are one of the most popular handguns, and everybody was buying up everything, more Glock 19s were being sold to the point where they had to start uh, shipping Glock 19s into the U.S. that were originally designed or uh, built for the foreign markets. So they have the Austrian proof marks on them. So it was kind of cool that I got to have one of those. And um, actually, a little side note, Dad uh, could have bought two of these with consecutive serial numbers and uh it didn't but hey you never you know you don't think about those things at the time always but it's really cool to get to have this um to this gun especially you know being one of my first guns i got on my 21st birthday and and uh, all that kind of stuff and also being a glock 19. so with the glock 19 um uh, it's a gun it's the very first gun i ever carried when i got my care permit i got it very soon of course after i turned 21 and i started carrying this thing and um I felt pretty good about it. I didn't have a lot to compare it to at the time. I carried my 1911 some occasionally, and of course it's a lot lighter than that. Uh, but, but it worked well as a carry gun. And 
my opinion of it now, since I've carried lots of different guns, is that the 19 is is not the best carry gun, but it's it's such a it's in such an amazing Goldilocks zone for uh, capacity capacity and reliability and weight and size uh, for concealed carry. It's like it's just so it couldn't be any more in the middle. So it, it's a very popular carry gun for that reason uh, because it has such a great track record of reliability and the nine millimeter round, as Dad mentioned some earlier is even gaining in popularity even more so, which almost seems impossible uh, because of the, the bullet technology. And I've always been a fan of the nine millimeter. Uh, I've never really liked the 40 a lot because while the 40 may pack a little more punch, I don't think that the loss in um, recoil control is gonna make up for um, what you lose. Um, if that makes any sense, maybe I said it wrong. But, but uh, the, the 40, and it's not a it's not a tough guy thing it's not like and there's probably people right now think oh well if you can handle recoil then you can have a 40 you know it's not about that it doesn't matter what level you're at if you've been shooting for two months or you've been shooting for 20 years you're going to find that you shoot a nine millimeter better than a 40. that's just how that's just how it's going to be in 99 percent of the situations uh, because recoil affects our shooting no matter what level you're at so i think the nine makes a little bit more sense for me personally uh, my own opinion than 40 so that's why I like I like the 19 uh, versus the 23 which is the 40 in the same size um, another thing another point I want to make too about this gun is that Glocks of course like all guns have their drawbacks um, one thing people will say is they'll say if Glocks are so great then why are people always having to uh, modify them and change them and all this kind of stuff and the reason for that is and it's true a lot of people do do a lot of mods to glocks on the grips and the sights and all different sorts of things the reason that, that people mod glocks so much is because glocks do such a great job with the things that you can't change right i would rather i would rather buy whether a gun or car whatever it is i'd rather buy a product that has the stuff right that's really hard to change and even if it has a bunch of other little things around it that are annoying and fix those things than buy something where even though it has some of the little add-ons that I like, it may not be exactly what I want at its core. So that's part of the reason for that. And then also with the grip, uh, people will complain it doesn't feel good. Well, a lot of times um, people put a little bit too much importance in like how good a gun feels when you pick it up in a gun shop. The thing is a gun is not a glove. You're not gonna wear it all day. Uh, for self-defense, you may never have to actually shoot it in a self-defense situation. And if you do, it's going to be so short that it's not going to matter. The only thing that matters is, is that gun reliable? Is it a good gun to carry because of how light it is and, how, and the size of it? And can you shoot it well? It doesn't matter if it feels comfortable, right? Like, I would carry a gun that felt just horrific. Maybe it burns when I hold it for some reason and it, it hurts. Um, I'm still gonna carry that gun if, it, if I feel like the job it does is a lot better than anything else. So how it feels doesn't really matter. SIGs, for example, feel way better than to, be, to me than a Glock. I pick up a SIG and just, oh, it's just night and day compared to a Glock. It feels amazing, but I don't shoot them as well as a Glock. So that's part of my decision on that. Let me uh, shoot it some and then maybe I'll think of something else. Let's see. Hit the turkey, but it didn't fall. Uh, I guess I ought to shoot the gong. It's a tradition around here. Maybe a little low. get plenty of shooting in this video so I don't really need to shoot it too much more um, but yeah I, I'm just a, a big fan of the Glock 19 it's just really just fits in that Goldilocks zone for me it has a bunch of little annoying things about it like not that great of a grip you know the the sights I like the sight picture of the of the factory sights but as far as uh, 
durability. I mean, yeah, they're plastic and they can get broken or uh, they could slide out or something like that. Doesn't have that big of a uh, slide release, which might bother some people. Uh, may not be that aesthetic. Uh, some people hate how it looks, but it gets the job done. Has a great track record. Uh, just a good all around Goldilocks gun. And, and like Dad mentioned, I always recommend the 19 to people. You know, if they're not sure what kind of gun they're gonna like or, or whatever, it's just, just a good all around gun. I've liked it for a long time. And that particular one is kind of a neat one. So hopefully that made some sense. Maybe it didn't, that's okay. But uh, Dad's coming back anyways. So, all right, Dad. All right, I'm back. Thanks, John, for your impressions with the Glock 19. As you can tell, you know, John has shot it a lot and has definite opinions about this firearm. Uh, it's, uh, you know, again, we don't want to sound like Glock salespeople. It's just the firearm that we've liked, I've liked for a long time. And, uh, you yeah, know, we don't get paid by Glock or anything like that. It's just, I'm biased. I like them, okay? And I've gone over the reasons in a lot of videos, you know, why I tend to carry them. Now, again, when it comes time for me to go out and shoot something, I'm not necessarily going to go out and just shoot the Glock, you know, on the place and go prowl around and plink with it, probably more rarely than uh, almost any other firearm. I'm, I'm going to grab probably a favorite revolver, a favorite 1911, a cool rifle, a military surplus rifle, and that sort of thing. It, I see it as just a really nice offensive firearm, and, and of course it is fun to shoot too. Uh, the current, uh, so one of the things I wanted to kind of determine in, in the, these revisits, would I buy it today, you know? With some firearms that may not be as obvious, with this one I think it's pretty clear, yes, I would buy it today. I put my money where my mouth is and I have uh, bought you know, a couple of them at least. So, so I have uh, uh, a small quantity of Glock 19s. I like Glock 19s. I even prefer the Gen 4. I'm so strange. Uh, the popularity of it today, uh, the current market for the Glock 19 is very, very strong. Strong as ever, I think. The popularity is probably more popular than ever. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, we think we all know that. Uh, weaknesses, uh, problems I've had with, uh, with the firearm. I've not really had, uh, let's see, what problems have I had? Uh, in one of those early Glock Generation 4 videos, Glock 19, I think we had a couple of hangups with some of that really weak ammo. Uh, beyond that, the things have just worked for me. Now, they're not perfect. You know, as John said, there are some things. I, I really wish Glock would contour the front of the slides like they do in the Glock 26 or the 35, the 34, the 41, you know, some of the models. I really wish they would do that. I don't know. It's just... It's just really nice uh, to have that front contoured uh, the way it is on the baby Glocks. If they would do that, then it really would be the perfect firearm uh, in a lot of ways as far as a carry gun. The polymer sights, uh, I'm fine with those. I've uh, never had them to break on me. Uh, some people have, but I've, I guess I've just been lucky. I've never had any problems with them, and I like the sight picture, and I like the, uh, the smoothness of the, of the firearm and not the doesn't have a busy... Uh, feel to it with gadgets and controls sticking way out uh, off the firearm. You know, so and I've talked about that before, you know, in videos. So uh, not a lot I would change. It's not the best grip I've ever felt. But again, as John said, you can work with it. There are things you can do to make it more your own, as I normally do. I normally contour under there with a Dremel tool. Uh, usually put talon grips on them. And I've even been known to build up the back a little bit, you know, with some extra talon grip material or whatever, just to make it feel a little bit better for me. But uh, it's just like, like this firearm, other than those grips, that's the way it came out of the box. That's the way I carry it. This is one of my common carry guns, this Glock 19. You know, 15 plus one with modern ammo good hollow point ammo doesn't have to be hst you know it could be any there's a lot of really good carry ammo uh you just don't get a lot better now that's another thing i was going to point out about it of course is uh as most of you know that with the glock 19 you can use any of the magazines that are longer which means any glock 19 magazine or nine millimeter magazine other than the glock 26 right because it's shorter so you can use the, the 33 round glock 33 mag the uh Glock 19 mag and the Glock 17 magazine. You know, in fact, that's what I carry as a backup generally. All right. Uh, so, simple firearm. 
Most of you are familiar with them. Simple to field strip, take them apart, you know, there they are. I think I probably did that in the very first Glock 19 video we ever did. And that was one of the earliest videos that we did because even way back then, this was a very popular firearm, okay? Now, if you're, if you're looking for a firearm that is something different than what everybody carries, okay? The Glock 19 is not for you. Uh, and that's maybe a subject for a different day. A lot of people look at a Glock or an AR-15, oh, I'm tired of those things, almost so beyond all that and everything, and they don't want any part of it because it's what every policeman carries, it looks like, or it's what so many people like and they rave about, you know, in videos and online. And so I definitely want anything but a Glock. I understand that attitude, I, I, I do. Uh, but. The thing is, you're in a niche world when you're in the shooting world, and yes, it's widespread. A lot of people like them and carry them, but it's not like the general public, like most of the people in the country like a Glock 19. No, I won't say most shooters, but a large percentage of shooters do because they're already into shooting and they have made that choice. It's like Dylan Presses or something, you know, uh, people want something different from Dylan. Everybody seems to use Dylan. No, just people who have a lot of experience reloading who have discovered that that it's a great press, you know, so it's a little bit different. Uh, but anyway, you can take the hipster attitude on it, get you something else just because everybody else uses this thing or so many people like it. I understand that and uh, sure, uh, certainly do. But the Glock 19 and uh, Part of the reason I'm making a big deal out of it, that is part of the revisit format. We want to revisit some of the different firearms that you haven't seen for a while, give you an update on them. And part of the revisit theme and impressions on the Glock 19 is just an extremely positive one. It could be a, uh, maybe a negative one on another firearm that we haven't uh, shown for a while, that maybe I'm not as crazy about it as I once was. You know, it could be the fact, even though it's an iconic firearm perhaps, I don't know. But this is one that uh, both John and I are still very fond of, and we just wanted to pass that along, give you an update on our impressions of it, you know, in the market, the current popularity, and just anything else that maybe we haven't shared as much in recent videos. Okay, something a little different. Uh, the fact is, this baby is, uh, it's hard to argue with. If you're looking for a good carry gun, and there's a lot of good carry guns, Let's just empty a magazine. I don't think I've shot it enough. Uh, I mean, when I get the Glock 19s out and plenty of ammo, I just want to shoot them. <laughs> oh, I got ammo, ammo. Cowboy. <laughs> one more mag, just just bear with me. One more, okay? <laughs> it's just a fun gun. All right, we, we just felt like it was uh, worthy of a little revisit, okay? So uh, the Glock 19, uh, you might hate it. You might, you might just not like them a bit, uh, but I, I like them. I'm sorry, I like them. Actually, I'm not sorry. I just like the Glock 19. Life is good. We'd like to thank one of our sponsors, SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI has fully accredited distance learning programs where you can get certified in gunsmithing or even an associate's degree in firearms technology. Of course, the study includes hands-on experience, which is important, of course. So check it out. Uh, go to sdi.edu or just click on the link in the description. Okay? And also, we'd like to remind you to check out the Hickok 45 Facebook page and the Hickok 45 and Sun channel and its Facebook page, as well as Gun Culture Radio on iTunes. Now remember all this, because I'm coming to your house randomly over the next year or two to give you a quiz on it, okay? Thank you.